And so a lot of people ask me, okay, so who should be saving seeds? And then my answer is always, is always everyone. Anyone who wants to, everyone who's interested in, if you've never done it before, if you've been doing it for years, everyone should be doing it. Um, if you're interested and like anything else, it just happens from trial and error. It just happens from trying like anything that you do for the first time, you just have to read about it, do a little research, figure it out, and then just keep, you know, keep figuring it out. You'll be figuring it out for years. I mean, I've met farmers who are 80 years old and they said that they're still figuring out and trying to find that perfect seed or variant that they like, right? Because it's a continuous process. It never is like, Oh, I now know how to save seeds. I've been doing this for eight years and I still don't know enough, right? So the point is that it's an ongoing continuous thing. Um, I'm gonna go into some quick basics of saving seed. Um, I'm not gonna be able to do demonstrations. I do know that some people in their feedback asked for like a step-by-step -step guide. Uh, we don't have enough time for that. So I've actually put some of that in the resources that I will be sending out uh, to Triffin, who will then distribute it to everyone. Um, but these are like my quick tips and things to keep in mind. So uh, the first thing is, like I said, always look up your plant. And that is because, um, like I said, I taught earlier, some plants cross pollinate. So if you have one corn variety sitting right next to another corn variety, they will most definitely cross pollinate. So then it'll become, you save the seeds, but then the following generation will be haywire, like I explained to you, because that will be F2. So you need to maintain a proper distance. So social distancing exists in plants as well, so if you want to save seed. So you'll have to keep a certain distance. So each plant um, has a different, I mean, there's also, delineated distances you can keep so if you're interested in doing multiple i would suggest as a small scale gardener just plant one type of corn um, but if you're really interested in doing like two varieties then you will need to keep them like eight or two, 12 feet apart i mean there's a delineation it's in the resources you can check but so always look that up look up like so if you're planting many varieties of tomato or if you're planting many varieties of lady's finger things like that just make sure that you maintain distances um, secondly, for most of the vegetables, us kitchen gardeners or home gardeners are sowing, you, they need to mature on the plant. So if you're trying to save chili seeds, don't save the seed when the chili is green, right? Because it's not matured all the way. So you have to wait for the green chili to turn red because that's when it's going to have more vigor and then it'll last longer, etc. So it's the same thing, like for ladies finger, you have to wait for it to dry on the stalk or even tomatoes, you need it to go beyond the harvesting time. So you're like, oh, this tomato looks great, but if I want to save the seed, leave it on longer, like let it get overripe on the plant. Um, once you actually save the seed, it has to be air dried. Now, the reason for that is, uh, most of us probably know this, but what initiates uh, germination? It's moisture. So if your seeds are wet and you store them wet, they will germinate, right? So you have to um, make sure to um, make sure that they dry out, air dry them out properly. And then you have to store them in airtight containers. So this could either be Ziploc bags or glass containers or metal containers. I'll be showing you some examples and some pictures coming up, but it has to be airtight so moisture cannot get in. If you're just saving your seeds for one season, like you're gonna plant them the next season, you don't need to put them in the fridge because seeds can last I mean, okay, so I mean, there's storage where seeds have last, th lasted thousands of years, but I mean, generally speaking, our seeds now are viable for about a year uh, um, until the next season without any problem. But if you want to save them for many years, then you need to keep your seeds in uh, the fridge. Um, if you're going to just store them at home, you can keep them in like a cooler, dark place. Um, and then if you're also storing them in a container, make sure you put some kind of pest control. And so we at Navdanya usually talked about natural pest controls. So you can use like salt, you can use dried neem leaves, you can use dried chilies because insects um, can't survive in that. Or you can also use camphor crystals um, because that is also a good pest preventative. And then my big, big, big recommendation to anyone who is saving seeds is always label your seeds. I have lost many seeds to misidentification or not labeling. Um, and you label whatever you think is important to you, whatever you 
characteristic or trait you want. Make sure to put the name and make sure to put the year um, just so that you know when that seed was saved and you know what seed it is. Um, but you can put as much information or as little information, but just always label your seeds. Now, I'm talking about saving seeds at home, but I also want to talk about seed banks, right? Because that's the last part of this talk. And I call, um, not I, but Navdanya and a lot of, even Dr. Debal Deb, um, they call these living seed banks. And that's because these seeds are, if you can see, they're preserving diversity, right? We're preserving um, many different seeds at one time. But most importantly, it's a living seed bank because the seeds are being planted every year, every season. So it's not in a cryogenic vault that is sitting up in the Arctic and is waiting for a post-apocalyptic scenario and then they will be planted. No, these seeds are being planted every year so that they can adapt to all the changes. They can also build resilience, right? And so that's why it's called a living seed bank because these seeds aren't dormant. They're just dormant maybe for one season and then they're going to be planted again. That's why they're called a living seed bank. And most often these seed banks are community seed banks. So Dr. Debal Dev, as well as Dr. Shiva and Asit Navdanya, we're training communities to actually set up seed banks. And then the community members are trained so that ultimately they take over the carrying of the seed bank. It becomes a community run thing. It's not run by the nonprofit or whoever. So the idea is that these are living seed banks in each district or in each village or, you know, subsection. So that's the idea. Um, I wanted to show you an example of saving wheat here. If you can see, the wheat is planted very close to each other. So someone might ask me, why is the wheat so close? Won't it cross-pollinate? So wheat is a complete flower, which means that it self-pollinates, which is why you can plant it very close to each other and save seeds. Now, can you see the wheat all the way in the back that is um, browning already? And then can you see this wheat in the front is still quite green and young? So it's not ready to harvest. So that one in the back is actually almost all ready to harvest. So that might be something that a farmer chooses is that I want to plant two wheat, wheat varieties, one that is ready for harvest in 80 days and then one that is ready to harvest in 90 or 95 days because then he'll get two, two crops, right? Like he'll get two seasons of harvesting. So farmers get to plan these things, right? They get to decide. Um, and that's the idea of why you could, you want diversity is because, you know, you might want multi harvests from your crop. Um, another, I wanted to show you here is um, lady's finger drying. So this is dry lady's finger. Um, on the right is paddy, right? So it's rice. And as you can see, it's been labeled here. So this is Shobhar paddy. So that's the variety name. And um, over here, you can actually see this is one of the ladies from the farm. But each of those um, squares is a different variety of rice. And you can actually see the slight color variation between the different rice grains, the, the paddy grains. So, and in the back, you can see all that hay. So that is hay that we would save and then we would give to our cows over the next successive few months. Um, and then, like I showed you, this is our seed bank. I want to show you the containers. Oh, yeah. Um, so the, we also have things hanging because you can dry things and actually just let them hang. It makes it very beautiful and to show the diversity. So on the right here is uh, wheat. In the center here, you can see some gourds and some flowers. And on the left here, this is actually marigold. So the whole flower has been dried once it is reached maturity. Um, and then those will be used as seeds in the next season. Marigold at the farm was actually planted in between different wheat um, because it's used as a distraction because the insects will love the smell of the marigold and hopefully go to the marigold and then not attack the wheat. So that's the idea. Um, this is some more examples of some of the gourds that you can see on the right having been saved and you can see some pumpkin here on this photo on the left. So, so these are different containers that we use at Navdanya. We talk to farmers about which containers they we recommend. These aluminum cans were not our favorite because we often saw when we opened it that there would be a lot of pests or flies coming out of it. Um, certain, um, so it was not airtight. But if you're just saving for one season, it's okay. But if you want to save for two, three years, then you usually lose the germination rate. So our recommendation was usually glass or as you can see here, the glass is nicely labeled and everything. Or we often very much recommended, these are some traditional varieties of saving um, seeds. So this is actually just wicker baskets, but then it is um, covered with a coating of clay. 
So what happens is the clay would dry, so it would make it airtight after you put the seeds inside. And clay is actually very cooling. So that allows for it um, to, to actually stay airtight and cool. On the left over here, you can see these are actually clay vessels. So then the, it would be sealed with wet clay um, after the seeds have been put inside. And then it would, the seal would be broken in the next sowing season. So these are some traditional ways of seed saving. Um, up in the mountains and Himalayas, they would actually dig seeds. They would make um, dig holes in the ground and um, put pine needles as a pest control. Um, so yeah, each culture actually has their own seed saving techniques and methodologies. So this is my final slide. This is actually um, a list of all the different types of seeds that Navdanya saves year by year. Uh, so you can see, I think, yeah, at rice, we are at 740. Um, and at wheat, um, Navdanya is at 210. So we have beans, we have finger millets, we have oats. So our seed bank has a really good amount of diversity um, and they're constantly building it year by year. Farmers will bring varieties and then we'll start planting it. Um, so yeah, that is the end. These are the resources I've put together. It's actually like four pages because I got quite enthusiastic. So I will be sharing this with you. Um, some is just on Navdanya and then I go into seed saving. There's different papers and um, websites. And these, um, here's one on storage, etc. But on this final page, these are, this is the talk I talked about. This is Dr. Dable Dave's talk is the first link. Um, and then there's a article that I thought was just interesting because it talks about how some seeds were found in an archeological dig and they were 800 years old in a Native American reserve in Northern America and they planted it and they actually revived the variety. So they were still viable 800 years later. So I thought that was pretty amazing. Um, and then here's um, some talks by different people um, like Dr. Shiva and Bill McDorman. So these are some, some talks I just thought would be useful. So I hope this has been useful. Thank you for joining me today.